Uh, good morning. And uh, I'd like to say uh, welcome you, Beth Buffalo, uh, Tony Mofshin, and I. Uh, uh, welcome you to the National Academy of Sciences Colloquium on using monkey models to understand and develop treatments of human brain disorders. We'd also like to express our uh, gratitude to the National Academy of Sciences and the Arthur M. Sackler Colloquium Endowment for supporting this colloquium. Now, at the outset, would like to answer some of the questions about the rationale uh, and the organization of the colloquium. This is for the benefit of the audience that's here today and those who may watch a video of the colloquium in the future. I think the first question is, why are we It's that in recent decades, mice have become the dominant animal model for studying the basis of human physiology and disease. Mice are genetically tractable, and as mammals, they have bodily functions broadly similar, similar to ours. But for the study of higher brain functions, the similarity between monkeys and humans is far greater than that between mice and humans. This similarity between humans and monkeys is not surprising given that the evolutionary separation between them is thought to have been about 25 million years ago, whereas the separation from rodents uh, was some 75 million years ago. So the similarities of behavior between monkeys and humans becomes particularly critical when tests of therapies destined for humans depend on dis detecting subtle alterations in behavior. What can be seen in a monkey cannot necessarily be seen in a mouse. We'll hear more about this, uh, these species differences as the, the day progresses, starting with the first session this morning. But the point is that monkeys have great similarity to, to humans, both in their brains and in their behaviors. Okay. Why do, why do we have this uh, discussion now? Uh, I think a major reason is that the United, in the United States, the NIH decision to virtually eliminate research on chimpanzees frees those opposing studies on any kind of animals to shift their considerable resources to opposing studies involving monkeys. One of the most uh, impressive indications of this shift is the bill that was introduced in Congress by Senator Cory Booker of New Jersey. The first provi provision in the bill is that monkeys will be used only when, quote, the research is for prevention, diagnosis, or treatment of debilitating or life-threatening clinical conditions in human beings. There is absolutely the absolute necessity for the first understanding of mechanisms uh, of human disorders is totally ignored. With the inclusion of all the provisions, the bill would eliminate the study of monkeys in the United States. Unfortunately, the United States is not unique, including the UK, the, the study in Europe, studies in Europe of monkeys has declined, as has the number of laboratories studying monkeys in the US. This is at the same time that strict government regulations have been put into place to ensure humane treatment of monkeys. Verification of the compliance with these regulations has all also been uh, universally adopted um, at the behest of the um, Accreditation of Laboratory Animal Research, uh, ALAC. The major country that uh, stands apart is China. Monkey research is one of China's top neuroscience priorities, and it is vigorously expanding its studies of diseases that depend on monkey research. So why now? I think basic research in monkeys 
is directly threatened in probably Europe, but emphatically in the United States. Okay, is the monkey the only uh, animal model? We want to emphasize that we think monkey research is essential for understanding and treating brain disorders, but we are not arguing that is, it is the only animal model. A fundamental principle of biology and biological research is that animals, the animal studied, is the one most likely to reveal the functions of the biological system of interest. It might well be that the mouse, mouse, the mouse model is the choice for certain aspects of these disorders, but the monkey is likely to be the choice for understanding disorders at the circuits and systems level of the brain, brain function. In any way, comparisons between species themselves are probably essential to understanding human disease. So, no, we're not uh, arguing for monkeys only. It basically depends on the question asked. Okay, what's the major issue? Um, I think we need to emphasize that the first step in treating brain disorders is the basic is the basic research required to understand systems in the brain. And that's what we need to emphasize. This basic research is critical for understanding all biological systems, but it is especially critical for understanding the human brain that has at least 80 billion neurons, more than 10 times the number of people in the entire world. A pertinent example of the importance of basic research comes from one of the triumphs of science dependent upon uh, monkeys, the conquest of polio and almost forgotten now paralytic disease. It was a de devastating disease for which many patients required the respiratory maintenance of an iron lung. So that a ward related to polio treatment in the early 1950s looked like this. Frightening just to look at. Now the virus that causes polio was first identified, I'm sorry if I, if I fade away in not hearing me, raise your hand. The virus that causes polio was first identified in 1910 by Landsteiner and Popper, who demonstrated transmissions from humans to monkeys after failing to do so in rabbits, uh, mice, and guinea pigs. A description of their experiments commented that the monkeys, quote, probably represented an expensive luxury for these young scientists. Probably represented, an ex uh, ne nevertheless, they were willing to risk what might have been considered a useless expense for an experiment which did not have any particular uh, promise of success, end quote. I think it's a good description of the risk of a search for understanding. Now, in 1935, 25 years after the virus was uh, isolated, tests of a vaccine were car carried out on adults and over 3,000 children with only limited tests on monkeys. Immunity was generally not produced but some cases of polio probably were produced. The problem was a lack of sufficient understanding of the virus and of the vaccine. The next vaccine trials were 20 years later in 1955, when understanding had expanded dramatically, and the SOC vaccine was successful. The iron lung disease has been nearly eliminated throughout the world. Understanding takes time. In the case of this, it took half a century. So what's the major issue? I think it's explaining that basic research is the essential first step for understanding brain functions and its disorders. We obviously hope that the examples in the colloquium today will provide specific information for that explanation. 
Okay, that brings us to the organization of the colloquium today. In a two-day colloquium, it's uh, obviously uh, unlikely that we can summarize the extensive research findings on monkeys that are related to human disease. But what we can do is provide a few examples in talks with time for some depth of presentation and questions. So today we have uh, seven sessions, five of them devoted to clinical topics. We begin each clinically related session with a clinical perspective that emphasizes the relation of clinical problems to the basic research that's done in the field of that particular session. The clinical sessions are disorders of development, disorders of aging, restoration of sensory functions and restoration of motor function, and finally disorders of mood. We deviate from the clinical format in two sessions. What we have considered so far is a retrospective of monkey research. And it's basically answering the question, well, you guys have studied uh, monkeys for multiple decades. What have you learned? But we wanted to go ahead and look at the future, particularly at the emerging new methods of monkey research, uh, genetic disease models, and optogenetic modulators. And this is the topic of the last session today, which is the fourth session in the series, uh, Molecular Tools for Monkey Research. So the second deviation is the first session this morning, Brains and Behavior, Human, Monkeys, and Mice. We thought it would be useful to start off by documenting specific comparisons between humans, monkeys, and mice. The goal is to provide some of the evaluation of the extent of similarities and the differences across species. So we can uh, now go on to the first session. Uh, David Van Essen will compare cerebral cortex of humans and non-human primates. Non-human primates, I ex expect it includes marmots, uh, <laughs> chimpanzees. John Mansell will con compare attention behavior in monkeys and mice. And Anita Disney will talk about control of cortex by neuromodulators in humans, monkeys, and mice. So uh, we can start the session with David. Uh, who will talk about cortical structure, function, and connectivity in humans and non-human primates. <laughs> 